Hi, I'm Arun, Application Engineer at Maxim Integrated. In this video, I'm going to discuss on what is voltage margining, where it is used, and how to perform voltage margining. Voltage margining is a test procedure that determines the safety margin of a load circuit. The load circuitry is dynamically tested over its supply voltage range. For testing, its capability to tolerate the change in power supply voltage over time. This will ensure the performance of the low circuitry in the rated power supply range. Here in this figure, the power supply is providing V out to the load circuit connected to it. And the acceptable tolerance range for the load circuit is delta V that is shown in the graph. Power supplies and electrical devices are designed to operate with some tolerance range. The margin circuit will adjust the power supplies to its lower end and its higher end tolerance ranges. This will ensure that the load circuitry is working correctly. Voltage margining is mainly used in high reliability systems to test, prototyping and testing the circuitry during the time of manufacturing. Voltage margining tests the performance of the load circuitry in the rated power supply range. A large number of parts can be characterized to determine a safe range for the load circuitry specification. This will improve the performance and yield. Any out of specification devices can then be replaced as part of the margining test process so that the field failures can be avoided and reduces the overall expenses. Now let's see how to perform voltage margining. This is the circuit of a power supply. It can be either switching regulator or an LDO. Output voltage V out of this power supply is set using the feedback resistors R1 and R2. With respect to the output voltage, the feedback voltage changes and error amplifier corrects the V out to make the feedback voltage equal to VRF. Very little current is flowing into the FP pin of the error amplifier so that we can ignore that current for this analysis. So the output voltage is equal to VFB into 1 plus R1 divided by R2. Now we can add margining to the supply. Here we are feeding a current into the feedback node using a digital to analog converter. This will change the feedback node voltage and hence the output voltage is changed accordingly. R3 is added in series with the DAC output pin and feedback node. The purpose of R3 is to vary the amount of control that the DAC output voltage has on the output voltage of the power supply. So, the output voltage resolution is a function of DAC voltage and R3 resistor. Let's take the Kirchhoff current low at the feedback node. IR1 is equal to IR2 plus IR3. Here, IR1 is equal to V out minus VFB whole divided by R1. IR2 is equal to VFB divided by R2. IR3 is equal to VFB minus VDAC whole divided by R3. We are substituting the currents IR1, IR2 and IR3 in the equation IR1 is equal to IR2 plus IR3. And solving, we get V out is equal to VFB into 1 plus R1 by R3 plus R1 by R2 minus V DAC into R1 by R3. Select R1 and R2 to obtain the desired output voltage with no trimming effect. That means V DAC is equal to VFB. The resistive feedback divider network and current sinking and current sourcing capabilities of the DAC controls the margin of V out on the power supply. 
we know that IR1 is equal to IR2 plus IR3. Since R2 and VFP are constants, there is no change in the value of IR2. So that delta IR1 is equal to delta IR3. And Vout is equal to IR1 into R1 plus VFB. Which implies delta Vout is equal to delta IR1 into R1. And IR3 is equal to VFP minus VTAC whole divided by R3. Which implies delta IR3 is equal to delta VDAC divided by R3. Hence, delta V out is equal to delta VDAC divided by R3 into R1. This shows the relationship between the change in output voltage with respect to the change in DAC voltage and function of R1 and R3. Now we can check what Maxim offers. Maxim have wide range of voltage supervisory products which is having inbuilt multi-channel DACs and ADCs. The ADC measures the output voltage and DAC will provide the voltage to the feedback node of the power supply if margining is required. This will provide the microcontroller to calculate and set the correct DAC code for the desired output voltage. Maxim supervisory products features power up sequencing, power down sequencing, wash down functionality, voltage monitoring, etc. We have Max 16046EV kit with us to show you the voltage margining functionality. Max 16046EV kit includes two onboard LDO power supplies. LDO1 is Max 1658 voltage regulator equipped with feedback resistors R2 and R8 to set the output voltage to 3.3 volt. A series resistor R9 connects the LDO feedback to the DAC out 2 to facilitate voltage margining. This is LDO1 Max 1658 on Max 16046 EV kit and we have connected DAC out 2 pin and mount 2 pin of MAX16046 to digital signal oscilloscope. Now we are connecting the EV kit to PC after checking the default jumper configurations. Once the QE opened, connect the EV kit using the I2C and with default I2 address 0xA0. On the setup tab, we are configuring MAX16046 for LDO1. Make the EN out to EN02. Output type push pull active high. Monitoring pin to MON2. DAC output is DAC out to. And then clicking on the calculator, we can set up the margining up and margining down values. For LDO1, the reference voltage is 1.21 volt. And entering the resistor values from the EV kit, we will get the output voltage close to 3.3 volt. The minimum and maximum values of the output voltage corresponding to 8-bit DAC output values are also shown in the calculator. We can manually add the margining up and margining down values in the calculator window itself. Now we have to assign the margining up functionality to GPIO2 and margining down functionality to GPIO3 of MAX16046. GPIO2 is connected to SW6 and GPU3 is connected to SW7 on MAX16046 EV kit. We are assigning that GPU functionality under the details tab. Now, while pressing the SW6 on the EV kit, the margining up functionality 
and pressing the SW7 margin down functionality is enabled. From the graphs, we can see the DAC output voltage is varying when the margining up functionality is enabled. And we can also see the corresponding change in the output voltage. Similarly, for the margining down as well. In this video, we went through the basics of voltage margining and how to perform a voltage margining. For more information, stay tuned to MaximIntegrator.com. Thank you.